Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to answer this question and perform a demo. How to search your object in SQL Server Instancer? So that means we want to search an object in all of the databases in SQL Server or on a SQL Server Instancer. So answer is sys objects view provide us a list of objects in a database. We can use a cursor to loop through all databases and then use the sys objects view in each of the database and uh, search for that object and provide the list of all the objects in different databases with the same name what we found so let's go to SSMS and take a look now what I have here I'm a, I have written my query select star from sys dot objects and I am in the test database right now so if I run this one it is returning me all the objects that include system tables system store procedures and everything so and views uh, uh, and user tables constraints uh, and whatnot but I am interested only in uh, the user databases so, uh, sorry user objects so what I'm gonna do I'm going to say where is uh, MS shipped is equal to zero so where it is one it means uh, they came with the system where it is uh, zero it means they are a user so I got uh, the list of the user objects now next part what I'm interested here this is given me the name of an object next uh, I want to get the schema because there could be possibility we will have uh, two objects with the same name but different schema so I want to get the schema name as well and uh, the last thing I, I'm interested uh, to get the type and the description and also I would like to get the database name with it so I have a query that I have written I want to show you here so what I did I used the DB name function that returns me the current database against which we are running the query so next what we have the name name from the sys.objects that's the object name that can be table name view name store procedure name or anything and then I'm using the built-in function a schema name and uh, if uh, I have to provide a schema ID to get the schema name to this function so schema ID uh, column is available in sys dot objects uh, view that I provided to it so we can get the schema name and then I'm getting type and type description from the sys dot objects view and we are interested only in user objects so this is the where class let's run the query now it return us four uh, objects so we can see that uh, let me make it a little wider so we have this uh, these are two views so the type is V and it tells us in the description there's a view and then we have a table customer and there is one uh, default constraint uh, we have created on uh, table and uh, that's how you will be getting the information so let's say we are searching for a table customer across multiple databases so how we will do it if we have hundreds of databases one thing uh, we cannot change every time let's say okay let me run on test this query then go to the test one and run this query there okay next one uh, I wanna change this one to test DB so that might be okay with uh, running four or five databases and uh, taking the information but uh, if I'm running uh, this query again against hundreds of databases uh, the manual part is not going to be helpful so every time we have to change and uh, run it change and run it so that's uh, gonna take whole lot of time and wastage of time so what I have here for you I have created a, a script uh, that will uh, be used to loop through the database list and run the same query against sys dot objects in each of the databases and then put the information into temp table and then we can query this temp table at the end and find out our object name so first of all I have declared the variable object name and uh, I have given watch are 100 you can increase it if you feel like okay your objects are going to be a uh, lengthy in the name so you can make it 500 then I'm setting uh, the object name variable is equal to customer 
so i'm looking for the customer uh, table or the store procedure or view so i didn't tell like what exactly i'm looking i'm just looking for a customer object okay next uh, i'm checking uh, if uh, this temp table uh, global temp table is available in the temp db if it is then drop it the next part uh, i'm creating this uh, table uh, with the uh, the columns uh, database name object name schema name object uh, type and uh, object description these are the columns they are informative uh, or they give me enough information uh, for regarding this uh, object and then uh, i'm creating uh, 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 i'm declaring a variable db database name and then uh, i'm starting a cursor so i declare a cursor for all the databases so this is going to give me the list of the databases on my instance then I'm opening a cursor and then we start fetching the record so we fetch the first database name into this variable and then we entered in the loop so here I'm setting the variable to the this variable database name I'm setting the value of uh, this variable to the internal uh, or local uh, variable at the rate db name and I'm uh, just uh, uh, using the code name function uh, if uh, there are some spaces uh, or anything in my database name let's say let's create one database so with the space and see if uh, because if I would not have the codes uh, around that this this will fail create database and we say sale and here we have to put the quotes around let me show you if we do without quotes what happened sale uh, region so if I will try to create like this uh, this is going to give me error but if I will put the quotes uh, or I can put the quotes here now it is going to take uh, the sale region at one uh, uh, string uh, and create the database for us uh, the also if you are not interested uh, to put uh, these quotes around here you can always put uh, let's say we want to put we want to have a space in the database name and uh, then uh, we can use the co double quotes or we can use uh, these uh, square parentheses so that that but uh, i don't really recommend uh, uh, putting the space between the database names uh, uh, it will create a lot of problems for you while you query and sometime uh, um, you miss those uh, quotes or you have to write a lot of parentheses so I recommend uh, not having space but anyways uh, this part uh, will be taken care of if uh, there is uh, any space between uh, the database name so I'm setting to the new inter uh, local variable uh, and uh, putting the quotes around it and next uh, I'm using a dynamic SQL inside the dynamic SQL I'm changing the database name so I say that use database name if I will have a store procedure or a, um, even a, I, I, I don't have the way to uh, ch say okay user and that of DB name if I will try to do that it is going to give me the error so if I will say user at the rate the DB name it is not going to change that let me show you real quick I always create examples and um, show you real quick what is exactly happening so if I'll say declare at the rate DB name and the word chart 100 and go and then uh, sorry uh, I will say set at the rate DB name is equal to test now if I'll say use at the rate DB name this is going to fail so it is an incorrect uh, syntax near at the rate db name so it cannot use uh, a variable here it has to have use uh, the database so if i want to change to the test i have to say test here so that's how it will work now change to the test but i cannot use uh, the variable here with the uh, use keyword so that's that's not gonna be allowed SQL Server doesn't let us do that so that's one thing you cannot do it that's why I came up here and use the dynamic SQL inside the, the dynamic SQL the value will be placed here so we will not have it at the rate DB but actual value that will be returned by this uh, variable so it will be able to uh, change the scope of this uh, uh, 
uh, query to that uh, database and then uh, I'm running execute uh, insert into the object uh, global timetable and the dynamic SQL run its own uh, its own uh, session so it is going to create a new session and run it so if I will use the local timetable that will not be available once the dynamic SQL will be done so that's the one reason I'm using the global timetable even the session will be closed or completed for the dynamic SQL this object will be available because we are creating on the top here and the, this session is still open and uh, even uh, dynamic sql get completed it inserted the records the, the session was closed so that was that session was uh, uh, connected or directly related or it was for the dynamic sql so that is completed but our actual session is not done yet so our temp global timetable is going to be available for us to query after that so make sure you use uh, the global timetable in the dynamic sql so you will be able to query after that if you will use uh, the local it will be destroyed as the session will be completed now here we are inserting all that information uh, and uh, I use the same query what we have here so this is uh, going to return us the database name uh, object name schema type and description so I use that one so next uh, we will be fetching the next database name and uh, keep looping through so till uh, all, uh, this query will run uh, for uh, all of the databases and then uh, uh, we will be closing the cursor and deallocating the cursor at the end what I'm doing I'm saying select star from this uh, global timetable and uh, where object is uh, object name is equal to at the rate object uh, name variable so remember here we set the value of that variable so we are looking for the customer so let's run this one and we see that it did uh, return us uh, okay the customer does exist in test database sales database and test database so let's go uh, and take a look let me show you one more thing so we have next time I'm gonna search for the view I have this view in different databases okay so it does show us all that if uh, customer let's let me go back uh, to the um, one database let's say go to, we go to ss uh, isd will or let's uh, go to the sales okay let's go to the sales and create a, a new view so let's create a view create view and we will call it um, customer bw customer at the end we say and uh, we have to say as and then say one as number ID or something so now we created a, a view uh, also I want to create one uh, I want to create new schema schema I want to say the test schema and now we will create the same object create um, view we'll call it uh, test dot customer and then we'll say as select one as ID so I'm trying to create multiple different objects uh, so I can show you if I go ahead and run this query again now what we see this one is also returning uh, us uh, a view and uh, it is telling us okay the schema name is the uh, test so that's how you can go ahead and search it now if we are interested in anything uh, not just the customer we were we are interested in uh, maybe vw underscore customer or maybe there is a customer underscore get record or whatever so you can always go here and you can change your query to the like so you can say like uh, maybe uh, customer and then as all the list of the tables views store procedures and everything from all the databases available now you can go ahead and change your query and search for with the like operator so you can uh, now you see that uh, there is a test database we have and here we have uh, in the sales I created that VW view and uh, that is also coming so this uh, 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 global temp table is uh, actually having all the records uh, for all the user objects uh, from each of the databases so you can query after that whatever you want 
So if even in the um, temp table you have those uh, global temp tables you have created it is showing you that. So this is one way how to change the database name inside your store procedure you can use this script as well how to uh, use a cursor so you can use this one uh, script as a uh, learning point and I have a, a lot of other videos on uh, same topics how to prepare your uh, cursor and what are the steps in the cursor and uh, also I have a video how to change the database uh, name inside the store procedure and all that so if you want to change this one to store procedure you can go ahead and create store procedure and pass a parameter uh, as object name and uh, then use it so thanks very much for watching this video and i will see you in the next video